as you have seen, non-determinism is pretty powerful. So the question is, of course, could we actually build a non-deterministic RAM? And as I told you before, I have no idea how you would do that. So if somebody asked me to build a non-deterministic RAM, I would turn them down. Although if you could build one of these, you would certainly become quite rich and famous. The next best thing we can do to building a non-deterministic RAM though, is simulating one. And now, of course, you will be asking yourself, well, if he doesn't know how to build a non-deterministic RAM, how is he going to simulate one? Well, the answer is actually not that difficult, but I'll have to warn you because the simulation will not be very satisfying, or at least we'll have to pay quite a steep price for the simulation. So the first thing we should probably talk about when we want to simulate a non-deterministic RAM on a deterministic RAM is how we would simulate a deterministic RAM on a deterministic RAM. So basically a picture like this, you have a deterministic RAM, and of course it's branded as a deterministic RAM. And on that machine, you do a simulation of another deterministic RAM. And this might look a little bit more complicated than it actually is. So all it means is that if you had a program code that you run on a deterministic RAM, instead of running this code directly, you have another program, and this program is basically going through your code and simulating what your code is doing. And this program here, which would be the simulator, is basically looking at the code and simulating what this code would actually do without running it directly on the machine. So it's running indirectly on this machine here. Another way you can look at this simulation is this diagram here. So you start out with a certain program that you want to simulate. And of course, you also start out not only with a program, but also with a memory of that RAM. And if you remember in the last unit, we said that the RAM had actually different kinds of memory, some memory for the input, some for the output and so on. But we'll just draw this as a single memory here. So we start out at the first line of code and then because it's a deterministic RAM, that line of code specifies exactly what's going to happen next. So it specifies certain modifications that we make to the memory. So we might change this variable here or even change two variables, although this is not often going to happen in one single line of code, but we make some modifications to the memory and we're still in the first line of code here. Then we're going to check if that line here actually is a statement that tells us that we are done. If that is the case, then the simulation would also be done. But let's say that this is not the case. We can then go to the next line of code in our simulation. And again, that line will also specify some other things that we're to do. So most of the time it's going to be, again, changing variables. Maybe it's reading a variable, but let's say it's also changing additional variables. So we check again if we're done, we go to the next line of code and so on until we're done. And the reason why this simulation works, and it actually works rather efficiently, I would say, is that determinism means that each line of code specifies exactly what's going to happen next. Now for our next quiz, I would like you to think a little bit about the cost of this simulation or the properties of this simulation. So I would like you to tell me if instead of executing a program directly or running it directly on a machine, we do a simulation of that code. What are the properties of that simulation? In other words, what does it cost us to do such a simulation? Obviously, it will take longer because we are wrapping some other code around the original program. But how much longer does it take? Does it take longer by a polynomial time factor? And by a polynomial time factor, I mean, if, for example, the original algorithm would run in O of n squared time, then the simulation would run in or O of n to the power of four times, something like that. Does it take longer exponentially, maybe? So if the original program ran in O of n squared time, we would now run in say two to the power of n time or two to the power of n times n square time. And finally, is this sort of simulation robust? So will it always give us the same result that the original program would have given us? Or is there a possibility that such a simulation can make a mistake?